Yes, guys, I'm Sai. Welcome to Cardiff City World. This is five things we learned from Coventry 1, Cardiff City 2. We're back again. It's going to be a, just a quick live half hour or so. We're going to talk a bit about the game, a little bit of uh, in-depth look at some of the tactics, look at what went well, what didn't. As always, very happy to have people's opinions and stuff like that. Get involved in the conversation. Um, hopefully, you all saw the flower hour yesterday on the show don't forget cardiff city world is cardiff city content seven days a week because we keep building and we keep moving towards it and then um, we keep adding more people more shows more types of content got lots of live content vlogs um pre-recorded stuff lots of different stuff previews analysis we want more people to join us so please do come join us um so we'll be thursday wednesday night tonight tomorrow night not sure what we got on but we will have something possibly We'll have uh, Super Kevin scripted, maybe uh, a new ep uh, an episode of that. Friday, we'll have the Hull City versus Coventry, that's uh, Hull City versus Cardiff preview, which I, I just recorded, actually, which is interesting, um, because I'm going away for a couple of days now. So, um, no, this is my last live show till, poof, couldn't even tell you. It's at Sunday. It's the like that. Not doing anything till Sunday after tonight, which is unusual for me, anyone who knows me. I do it every day all day but uh there we go it is what it is make sure you check out the flower hour on saturday for the initial match reaction as the boys will react and dig deep into the game um as i said i just done the, the whole preview uh so that'll be out on friday evening about 6 30 something like that so maybe look out for that but here today we are talking five things we learned from card city versus coventry um number one I thought uh, structurally, Cardiff City were much better. I think a big part of that is the balance in midfield of having someone who can pass and play through the lines alongside Siopis, who does the, the leg work and the energy. So I thought that was pretty good. Um, Josh Bowler did his defensive work, which means Penny NG wasn't exposed to on one, um, which just as a system sets us up nicely i'm still a little frustrated to see turnbull in that 10 number 10 position but look he can do it i just think his best position is deeper mate up front look mate up front works hard link up plays good fine we don't we are not creating a great deal grant again is pretty solid on the left i thought actually the left hand side we looked a lot more solid with Collins and Grant, they both work well together. Grant will give him support. Collins defensively, I think, is a bit more um, solid than, than S Brand. Wilson doesn't offer as much going forward, perhaps, and hasn't got the, the pace as much. But I thought structurally Cardiff were better, shall we say, much better. And I thought that was, I mentioned that in my um, post game thing and after the Sunderland game, was structurally, we were all over the place. And just, you could see, we just, <coughs> excuse me, we were very poor. But uh, number two, OGs, NGs, top scorers, baby. Look, that's a minute, it's an issue, isn't it, that we haven't got uh, an out-and-out -out goal scorer. Um, like, I can't like, go back on what I said. Like, when we signed my mate way back when, I was quite, totally do some bets for us because he's a good goaler um, and I think that a good bowler, he's a good player and he's got a good championship record so when we signed him I thought yeah, he'll do a job, he could do play on the right, could play on the, through the middle um, been very disappointed with him overall maybe yes because I expected too much of him I don't know, like I, he's, he's alright on the right, I don't think he's great I think through the middle I think his link up play and his work rate is good finishing is non-existent but we don't create a lot um which is a massive issue and i think a big part of why we don't create a lot is that our wingers are constantly next to our number 10s so whether it's colwell or turnbull or ramsey in the number 10 the wingers are so congested or so like compact that they've got no little pockets of space for the number 10 to drop into and he can't drop a little ball behind the fullback because the wingers aren't there high and wide it's obviously a problem at not having a striker, but um, 
Josh Bolo was much better, I thought, going forward as well. He went around the outside a couple of times. Just wish he'd stay wide. I still think, and I'll stand by that, I'll probably like die on this hill. I still think that if Josh Bolo played as a left winger and played as a traditional winger, I think he could be a real player. I think he's got that directness. He's got pace. He's got a trick in him. He's got a bit of quality with his left foot. And I just think if you if he played almost like what young like Ryan Giggs used to do, high and wide, always just try and beat your man and put a cross in. I think he could be quality. That inverted wingers is the fashion, and inverted wingers is the fashion. Um, but it's clearly an issue that Perry Ng and and own goals are like right up there in terms of our top scorers, if not are our top scorers. That's an issue. We need a number nine who's going to score goals. But we also have to create chances. And look, I think Carl and Grant can do a good job for us through the middle. But if we don't play to his strengths when he plays through the middle, we're not going to create anything. And I think that's the problem is we're not creating things possibly because of certain like you need round pegs and round holes for me and this is what i talk about with like turnbull is better deeper would bowler be better on the left would the dowder be a better option on the left because they can put a cross in but ultimately the wingers need to be higher and wider and trying to get in behind the fullbacks the number 10s then can drop into the half spaces to try and link up with the wingers link up with the fullbacks as they push in or the midfield or the strike or create or shoot and it becomes a bit frustrating but look let's try and focus on the positives we went into this game on the back of two of our worst performances of the season against the, a Coventry side who've been really good on a really good run having a good cup run managers good their strike I said before the game like you give Edna Sims a sniff he's going to get his goal he scored his 11th goal in seven games like the man's on fire and when he scored I was like oh here we go. But, you know, a few minutes later, Josh Bowler's forced an own goal. Liam Kitchens had a bit of a nightmare with that first one. Smashed it into his own net. Such is life. Um, number three, still no sign of these young players on the bench. It's really frustrating for me. Um, look, right. The question I keep asking myself is if I'm the manager now, I'm looking towards next season. So I'm looking at, I want to play Syopis and Turnbull as the two with Rawls coming in as like the one to give Turnbull a break or, or rotate. So that's my plan in my head. So I'm thinking I want to get Syopis and Turnbull playing in a double pivot sooner than later. But I also want to know, is Ali Tanner good enough to play championship football at the moment. So let's give him five starts now on the right-hand side and he can play anything from a half to 70 minutes. And then we bring in... And so I want... But I want to see if Tanner with... My screen's going wild. With... Um, I want to see if Tanner you know with some... People get starstruck from the lights, but I'll tell you With what, some starts. some real... What's going on? Well, I want to see if Tanner, with some stats, is going to be someone that we can rely on next year. But I also want to see if Joel Colwell and Keen Ashford are ready to be part of the first team squad next year. And I don't mean necessarily starting, but are they going to be able to be relied on to come off the bench next year? You know, they're both very highly rated. They've both got good records. And I'm like, we're not going to get relegated. We're not going to get the playoffs. And I'm not saying, like, throw them in and start them. What I'm saying at the moment is for the next few games that we've got, I'd like to see them get five, ten minutes just to see. And then maybe give them a start the last home game of the season. Because I just think we need to know if they're going to... Because sometimes you can put... A, a young kid in in the first team and they just excel they take to it like water and they are even better and more suited to men's football but then equally 
you can put them in and they could be so good in the reserve team and, and the youth team. But then when they get to men's football, it's just physically a bit much and they need to go away. But as a manager, I would want to know, is it going to be better to put Joel Colwell, you know, send him out for a League One, League Two loan, same with Keen Ashford? Or will they be someone who I can bring off the bench, give me a bit of energy and a bit of something special next year? And, like, for me, I don't see the point in... Bowler's not going to be there next year unless we're going to reloan him. And I really would be very surprised if we do that. I think there's a high chance Callum Robinson is not there next year. So that's a bench place that could go to one of those two mentioned youth players. I just think it's worth having a look and seeing how they do in men's like full first team football. Like remain Sawyer's on the bench on the weekend. Now, whether you think Sawyer's is good enough to be on the bench or in the first team squad isn't the question. The manager obviously doesn't fancy him because he's barely played all season, barely been in the squad, doesn't come on, etc. So, like to me, what's the point in put, having Sawyer's and Robinson on the bench? Neither come on. I doubt that either was considered to come on. You've got to build, in my opinion, he should be having a look for next season, but. On the other side of it is the reason he's not looking at them or looking at these different things for next year because he doesn't know if he's going to beat you. And that is a problem. Um, four, Cardiff City have to improve their press because what they are doing at the moment, I've no doubt that um, what they're doing at the moment is a tactic which has been instilled in them by the coaching staff. Like we're doing that stupid half press thing that we did against Swansea and they absolutely just walk through us because you've given teams time to just pop it about and they literally go keeper, defence, 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 midfield, midfield and they're through you and then you're all on the back foot. It's, it's ridiculous. It's a ridiculous tactic and it's the sort of tactic that you'd employ if you were playing like Barcelona or someone in the Champions League and you were a weak team. Like... Cardiff City will be at their best. They press high. They play wingers on and high and wide. And the other thing as well is the possession football that everyone keeps moaning about. That would work better if we pressed urgently and aggressively. That would work better if our wingers didn't invert all the time because we'd have options and movement off the ball and ways to progress the ball up the pitch and get in behind the fullbacks and all these different things that we don't have because we don't press, we invert the wingers, and it's incredibly frustrating. And we look for the wide options and it's never there. The whole point of inverting wingers is that the fullbacks get up and outside to still have that width. Bizarre. Um, just want to look at some of these comments a minute. Reese says, but I can't risk him on the bench at that moment. Every game he's playing to keep his job until he's told he's here. No matter what, you probably can't afford to risk playing the kids. Well, I can see that argument to it. However, from what I understand, shall we say, um, he could have could have signed his contract in January. He didn't, so that is what it is. But. Is my understanding like, and, and maybe that's changed since. Maybe now that can't same that same offer isn't there. But who it is, what it is? Um, look, I am f so frustrated by some of the tactics, and I th the, the also the one of the frustrating things is I think some of the tactics have changed to more negative as the season's gone on. I don't think our press was so half-assed early in the season. I'm sure I remember us pressing teams in the Jacks game, the first game. We pressed them high. We kept the ball. We were popping it about and we played possession football, but we played it with purpose. You know, Huddersfield away. Um, even like the early game, the first game of the season, like Leeds, we were pressing and, and doing that. It's got, it's got to be a tactical thing. And, and that's really, really frustrating. Really frustrating for me. Um, and number five, 
if the manager is staying or going, the team is safe. So why I would like to see him, particularly at home, send out the team to be aggressive and push. I still... I still think Bullock can be the right man for Cardiff City for the next couple of years. I still believe that. I just think he needs to tweak a couple of things that he does and some of the people that maybe some of the personnel and stuff. But I believe he's done all right with a team which is largely not his. And I think if you can give him players that fit the way he would like to play, you might see a slight change in the tactics in terms of attacking prowess what i will say is regardless of this you know staying going players being his or not he's got these players now there is players in there who are aggressive who are talented who are skillful who can create if you give them a bit of freedom i would like to see him at home especially send them out with the urgency aggression go and and to go and get the crowd behind you. Go and get the fans behind you. Go and put a tackle in. Go and press high. Let's go and just get our teams at home. Let's just attack at home. I would like to see that. But, it, I'm, look, I think in terms of his contract and stuff like that, I'm sure there's loads of reasons on both sides why it's kind of ended up being a bit of a shit show. Because it is a shit show. It feels very much like the Lamucci thing where everyone thinks he's going to stay and then he just goes. But I don't know. I wouldn't know. But what I, everything which I've heard is, like, from both sides, is just, like, him, it's pathetic. Like, just absolutely ridiculous. But I think also he may feel, and I'm hypothesising a lot, like, I have no information to say otherwise, but I think he may feel that, he was sold that there would be some funds in January and they'd be able to get some players in. And I think the players he wanted, he didn't get, and then ended up with some players that the club kind of got for him. Again, I'm guessing. But it is what it is. Cardiff are never organised, they're never ready. So what will happen will happen. I think us as fans now, we're safe. We haven't got a relegation battle. That was the remit. He's done that. Let's enjoy the rest of the season. What I would like to see, I would like to see him send the team out like attacking. I would like to see him send the team out aggressive and really kind of get the fans on behind him by the type of um, urgency and aggression that he sends the team out with. Like, ultimately, if the team's not pressing high or they're not progressing the ball quick enough or they're not X, Y and Z, he has the power to tell them that in the game and say, no, press higher. No, do this, do that. He has the ability to do that. He has the, you know, he's the manager at the end of the day. So either he's happy with what he sees on the pitch or he's not. And if he's not, he should change it. And if he is, then maybe that's more of an issue. Um, just my opinion, of course. As always, interested in your opinion. Um, what are we looking at? I'm going to go probably another five, ten minutes. So if you've got any questions, get on down. I do think he's learned. One of my criticisms of him throughout the season has been I feel like he should have learned more or as he was going. Like I felt like he was making some of the same mistakes over and over again. I don't fully understand his refusal to drop certain players, whether that be bowler i think at points has been quite awful attitude wise and, and work rate wise and i feel like there why wasn't he dropped or rotated or whatever but all right um he clearly he doesn't fancy tanner by the looks of it um same same with wintle to a certain degree it's difficult um like big picture i think we all said at the start of the season, certainly on the, the content and channels which and the people talking that I do, was if Cardiff could get top 12, top half, that's a good start. Next year then, try and push for the playoffs. Year after then, really, really push if you haven't gone up in the playoffs. And I believe 
that that's progress. That's how you build a team. He stabilised the, the club now with nowhere near relegation. He stabilised it. I understand the frustration with some of the, like, the playing style and stuff like that. But sometimes you just have to do a job to get the results. And he got the results that he needed to get to stay up. And that was what was the most important thing, was staying up. So now, look, if next season, if next season we, halfway through the season, we're like mid-table and we're still playing the same way, but he's got some players out and he's brought some players in, then I think you can start to ask the question, well, is he happy with not pressing and these inverted wingers and, and certain players not working hard enough? And then you can ask that question. But at the moment, and this season particularly, I think the job, the remit, the job was to stay up and he's done that. Now, he was, as someone just said in the comments, he wasn't familiar with the league. Championship is so unique, it's so different that I think, as I said the other day on the phone in when everyone was kind of being quite negative, I said, ultimately, if you're the board and the fans, I suppose, you've got to ask yourself, did you see enough in the first half of the season to say, all right, if he gets the right people and the right tools, he showed enough. He's got enough positive credit in the bank to say, all right, no, I think if he can get his players in and we can back him, he could do a job. He could do something. Yeah. I think, Matt just said there, and I, I I, actually think, so Matt has said, hopefully next year he'll be a bit more tactically astute and feel more confidence in making the right changes at the right times during games. I actually think, tactics-wise, I think he's got, not worse, but I think at the start of the season, I felt like he was really, when he, like the first half of the season, up to about December, early December, I thought I was really impressed with his tact. Like he was, ta- seemed to be really tactically astute, and he seemed to be making little tweaks depending on the opponent. And I feel like as the season's gone on, he hasn't done that as much. He's just kind of stuck with certain players who will do certain things, and then other players just kind of get pushed to the wayside because maybe they're a bit more creative and and i think that's the one thing he's got to find the balance for me i think he has to find a balance between a solid base that can keep the ball and can play well but also release the creative players and the attacking players the wingers the number 10 the strikers he needs to be able to give them a bit more freedom going forward but to do that you've got to have a good base and i think you know if we could keep phillips you've got phillips ng you've got Gutas has been okay. You've got Collins, I think, is pretty solid. Wilson Esbrandt, if he were to come back on loan, I think is that's a good two options at left back. Siopis, and then you can have Rawls, you can have Turnbull for certain games. Maybe you go Siopis and Wintle. Like you need options and you need to be able to change things up. Um, you know, Mark McGuinness, I think, would have been a huge loss if it wasn't for Nat, Nat Phillips. Like, really, really, really think we'd have struggled without McGuinness if it wasn't for getting Phillips in. So, credit, you got as much as you, we criticise the club and, and whatnot. Like, you've also got to give credit where it's due and say, well, all right, if we if we didn't have Phillips, we'd have been in all sorts of trouble without McGuinness. So, do they deserve credit for that or do we only criticise? You know, I think you can ask questions about... Um, Jeju and people like this because I'm not convinced that anyone I'm not even convinced he wanted to come here but I'm certainly not convinced the manager wanted him um such a weird one but it feels like the club they just needed to get someone in they needed a striker in because they failed to get keeper more for whatever reason and then I don't know it's like what is going on with that because the manager didn't seem to even remotely be interested in him and the it was just a very strange thing and like he hasn't been was he played like a couple of games here and there barely played when we've got no strikers which tells you everything about whether the manager wanted him in my opinion because 
if he wanted him, he'd be playing because we haven't got any striker options. So, yes, it's a weird one, that. And it's like, on that, do you give the club credit for making sure he had some sort of striker? Or do you criticise them for not getting a striker that the manager wanted? Like, is it better to have no one or is it better to get someone who they could get in? I don't know. I don't know what the answer is to that. It's such a strange, strange situation. I normally, and I, I hate it when clubs get players without the manager's input. I think it's amateur hour because the manager is ultimately the one, the one that's got to deal with the players. Uh, Jaden says Isaac Davis next season, maybe. Well, I said the other day in one of the shows, I forget which one, I would 100% make sure that on the first day of preseason, Isaac Davis is there. And I want to see him every day, all through preseason. I play in him in every game throughout the preseason. And I'm having a real good look at him to see how much he's come on. Is he going to be an option? Um, look, from what I've seen of him previously and the little bit I've seen of him this year, mate, he's better than Jeju. Better than Atate. Better than... Like Mate maybe offers something a bit different, but I mean, he's not worse than Jeju or Atate, and we need strikers. So let's have a look. And so this is something which I was going to do a video on, Reese, actually. Um, Reese says, I wonder if he feels he can't play pressing football and the brand of football that he'd like to because of the players at his disposable. Um, disposal. Uh, and I, that's why I, I absolutely, I think that that's what he thinks, that he's, that's why Wint, and I think that's why Wintel always plays, because he feels like that he can't press without him. And he feels like he hasn't got the personnel to press. But I completely disagree with that assessment, because Grant is really good in the press. Colwell can be really good in the press. Um, Bowler, all right. Sarapis can be good in the press. Rawls can be part of a deeper press in the midfield. And Wintle could obviously press. So I, I, I do. I think that that's why I think he plays certain, does certain things. Because he thinks that he can't play the way he'd like to. Um, Will says, in my opinion, if we had a genuine striker this season, we've had a, we'd have at least 10 more points. So we would be right up there in the playoff conversation. 100%, mate. You go back through the season, particularly from September to about Jan like 1st of January go and have a look how many one on ones we missed and as much as i think Carlin Grant's been one of the shining lights of the team this year he's been guilty of missing one on ones Mate has missed loads of one on ones um Atete missed one on ones we missed <coughs> bags of chances and the problem is when you don't create much as a team You've got to take those chances, and we've missed too many. Now, does a young player like Isaac Davis take those chances? I don't know. Or do we need to bring in someone with a bit of experience? Or do you go with the young player and you say, right, you're my guy? I'm sure a lot of it will depend on how much finances Cardiff have and, and whatnot. Um, right, last couple of minutes... Let me know if you've got any questions. <clears throat> uh, make sure you check the Flower Hour on Friday. Preview on, uh, preview on Friday. Flower Hour Saturday. Five things we learned on Sunday. Um, something will be out tomorrow on the channel as well. I'm not sure what. We also have Rodri Giggs on football. It's a pre-recorded one because I'm going away. Um, but there will be an episode to tomorrow night on Ace Podcast Nation. Uh, where Rodri has a bit of a rant about Bruno Fernandes, says he's to blame for Manchester United's midfield problems, which is quite interesting. Um, right. If you haven't got your tickets for Willie Boland on the 10th of May, make sure you get him. It's going to be a cracking night. There is very few tickets left in the Rose and Crown and Pont de Prix. Only £10 a ticket. Cult hero Willie Boland returns to Cardiff just a couple of days after my wedding anniversary and Willie Bolan was the man who got myself and my wife together which is kind of a nice little side uh, sideline 
hoping to announce one another one soon um just waiting for the venue to get back to me and then uh, we'll be good to go robert um but i'm looking forward to that that's going to be a cracker and then obviously um i've got a couple more which i'm looking for a venue for so if you know a venue i think they'll be up for it get involved let us know we'll get it going um please do spread the word to all your car city friends if you want to get involved in the channel get in touch got loads of like thing got a load of ideas we just need some more people involved to put them into practice effectively um i'm trying to think what else we got coming um could have some videos coming up as well looking at um i think i'm going to do a video of five five managers that Cardiff City could employ if the bullet train comes off the tracks um not that i want him to go but realistically at this point it's looking like a distinct possibility so thought we could have a look at that um what else we're gonna we can have a look at some players that Cardiff could have a look at maybe some out of contract players this year is it realistic do you think it's realistic that Cardiff could sign Nat Phillips and Carlin Grant at the end of this season and if they do would you sign both would you only sign one would you not sign them at all like would you sign those two players let me know in the comments and we can uh discuss it at a later date oh, i appreciate that i will have a nice time away Jaden says he would only sign phillips so you wouldn't sign Carlin grant wow it's interesting to me i see him get quite a lot of grief but i like to me out of all the forward players like the wingers and the strikers he's the only one who i think like obviously a doubt has been out all season until recently like only one i think who who does his job I'm not saying he hasn't hasn't um i don't think he's been as clinical with his finishing as he is capable of but i mean i think he looks way better than the rest of them yeah i don't like the wages on both is the big thing however I did hear a whisper that Phillips really, really likes the manager and really, really likes it in Cardiff. But I guess we'll see how much he likes it because he'd have to probably have half his wages to come on a free down here. So I think it's very unlikely. Um, the other thing I heard through the grapevine was that Carlin Grant really likes it, but also uh, West Brom want Carlin Grant off the books because he's on big wages. And ultimately, if they want to come to Cardiff City, they'll have to drop their wage demands probably in half both of them way too expensive we're trying to get rid of wages but I, i'd be very surprised if callum robinson is here next year apart from the fact he's fallen out with a manager just because of the size of his wages um regardless of whether you think he should or shouldn't or if he's good enough or not or i just think his wages are so high um colwell should be back for um for saturday would you put him in the starting lineup? Yeah, Kipra is out of contract uh, at the end of the season. Good shout, Reese. I mean, I would love, would love to see him back in your. I have a back three of of him, McGuinness, and Phillips. Woof. Not sold on them. Um, Good to ask me. Um, I think there's some there's some issues that I can see in his game, which I think get we get found out by a little bit against certain teams but you know he's still settling into a new league as well and i think he's had some good games he's brave and he's aggressive and i do like that in a center back so i'm not saying like i would get rid of him yeah i don't i think robinson's been a massive disappointment um i agree with that I like your uh, thing there and i think considering the wages and the reputation of the player in terms of how good he is I think he's been a massive disappointment on and off the pitch his attitude and everything would love to have kipri back and he seemed to really enjoy it down here as well which is another thing but i think wasn't his way just quite high i don't know um right guys it's been a pleasure appreciate you all i will see you on sunday but just because i'm not here 
there's still non-stop content coming out. Roger Giggs on football tomorrow night. Please do check that out. There'll be something on Cardiff City World as well. Friday, we have the preview for the whole game. Saturday, we have the reaction game. Sunday, I'll be back live doing the five things. Cardiff City phone in. Um, we've also got Roger Gibbons podcast coming soon, which is a belter, among other things. Take care. God bless. Have a great couple of days. Come on, the Bluebirds.